is that it is a fundamental human characteristic to seek improvement in themselves and in their environment. And it is through the use of ideas and action that we go about fulfilling this need. Design is, for me, simply ideas about the built environment put into action. Ideas, by their very nature, are new, or almost new. Perhaps at least new in the context in which they are employed. Once they've been sufficiently used, they become simply a habit, an accepted way of doing things, which is perfectly okay, but they then again fail to satisfy the desire for improvement. Ideas can range from a fundamental rethinking of existing conditions, an inversion, if you like, a proposal that what conventional wisdom dictates is preposterous or absurdist, or perhaps just the unlikely coming together of previously unrelated events. In our, one of our first projects, the Lagon Street Housing of 1994, an almost derelict, almost inaccessible back lane that had been on the market for two years and no one had wanted to buy, was given this ridiculously expressive facade binding three miniature townhouses. In Wednesday Road, we, tr we tried to love the hated, hated, hated 60s walk-up flats. Two townhouse types were stitched together in a puzzle. We used the front setback as a pool, and the council thought it was a pond. <laughs> in the Hawthorne Dome House, the idea of a house of puzzle was further explored, this time an incomplete one. In 2000, to our knowledge, no one had coined the term the 3D pixel prior to this. This concept, however, is not uncom uncommon in architecture. In QV, instead of the apartment as a mini house, it was rethought as a space in the round with a central service core. This building also had the audacity to dance around the formality of Melbourne City Grid. In Fitzroy High School, our plan exploration was to rethink the classroom type. Not a cell, but a multitude of interconnected spaces. The shape became also an iconic urban marker for the school. The required focus was on the individual, not the factory model of education. And you can see on the left-hand side, there's the, um, you know, one of their uh, earlier buildings, which is the factory model of education, and how different ours is. The idea of a flexible learning environment was revisited. In Southern Cross Station, in this gritty, unloved environment, we decided to create a jewellery box, the jewel in the junkyard, a moody building which could still entertain the onlooker. In the beach house at Rye, we translated a pure mathematical idea into origami and then into a house. The layout, image and spatial configuration was almost entirely new. In Blair Gowrie, we did have the entertaining and admittedly slightly absurdist idea that the letterbox was the front facade of the house. Actually, you can probably see it better in this image. Um, the following drama unfurls. The resulting shape stirs the imagination of the passerby and encourages them to consider their environment, to remind them of the endless possibilities available to them, to shape them out of conventional wisdom. In Monaco House, the important corner where everything happens is crumpled, contrasting vividly with the unlikely meeting of the polished stone of the front facade. The building contributes to Melbourne's laneways and yet challenges preconceived notions of a consulate in the most beautiful way, or we think anyway. This was the first modern consulate outside of Monaco that the Prince approved. Uh oh. I think we're, anyway, I'm skipping.
Um, in Dallas Primary School breaks the conventional wisdom of the open glass school by referencing a walled city-state. Something more relevant to the inhabitants who wanted to feel their children were safe and secure. A community that enjoyed colour in an otherwise drab and forlorn environment. Once we had conceived of the idea of a family's new living room as a cloud, the client, us and the builder were compelled to realise it. It reminded us of a childhood ideal and practically did everything we needed it to do. It just made sense. You might not think so. <laughs> <laughs> the keys. How to do an iconic tower. Just do two. <laughs> Make reference to things that are forgotten. Do what you can to, er to enrich a moribund, soulless type. It's a female building down there. That's a bit unusual. <laughs> Again, the idea of the boys' school as a haunted house outside and a cloud inside was for us a powerful idea about what school should be. Reference to surrounding Federation houses was the anchor. And this is an image I love because the adult sees a hat in the little prince, but the child sees a boa constrictor that swallowed an elephant. <laughs> While the infinity building had many pragmatic advantages for its shape, the metaphor of infinite learning with the library at the heart of the loop was and remains its key compelling idea. Antisocial spaces of lockers become social spaces. In this little folly come tree house, we force the marriage of a mathematical shape, the double Klein bottle, and the city silhouette to create a spatial configuration and an image beautiful and complex, childish and sophisticated. In the VCCC, the idea of an inspiring, which stands for Victorian Cancer Care Centre, the idea of an inspiring beauty was considered at least as important as the functional layout. In fact, this is what we were responsible for. Maybe design is everything. Does this mean that design can help cure cancer? We hope so. Whilst pragmatism is important, life is more than pragmatism. Life is about ideas and emotions. It is about designing a better life in whatever way we can. This is the good in the world. Design necessitates reflection and thought and strategic planning. Design is everything if we want a better, more relevant world. And it is always changing. Thanks.